Hello, guys. Ramon here. Yes, I am back. Since I covered how to install the anomaly mod last time, now it's time to take a look in game features and check basic tips and infos. This is bit longer than I expected, so I am gonna cover starting a new game and setups this time. In game elements and other stuff will be handled in the part 2. Alright, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, when we start a new run, we will see this screen. We've gotta select our character's faction, starting loadout, difficulties, and so on. You can pick a name whatever you want. You may change the character's photo, which doesn't really matter. If you put this as no data 1, it will be affected by your outfit. And, selecting location doesn't matter at all for the story mode. So, let me point out some important things. Gameplay difficulty, as its name says, it determines how hard your gameplay will be. It affects the game with these factors, your character's damage taken, sprinting ability, carry weight, etc. Progression difficulty, it affects your game progression wise, so with the harder progression difficulty, the slower game progress you'll have. In-game economy will become harsh, so you need to invest more time to grind reputation, money, and it will also affect on the starting loadout above. You can change these difficulty setups at any time later, so try out and if it's too easy or too hard, you can change it as you want. And now there are a few game modes below. I strongly recommend you guys play the story mode first, if you are a first timer. It has great volume of contents. Hmm well, in fact, it doesn't have a story something like a top notch novel. But it does let you venture through diverse areas in the zone. Warfare is the mode that reminds me the faction war contents from the Clear Sky. But actually I haven't played Clear Sky, and I have been playing the story mode for most of the time, I am not an expert for any other modes than the story mode. But I have watched some Warfare mode stream though, and I have played the Warfare mode a bit. So I would say, it's just a capturing points and search and destroy faction war mode. I actually plan to play this Warfare mode bit later, after finishing few more story mode runs. Azazel mode, is, a roguelike freeplay mode. So you can pick a faction and choose your starting loadout, only once when you start the game. You might have random companions following you, but there's no specific goal or main quest for the gameplay. And unlike the description, you will not respawn as one of your fellow companions but your next life will be just randomly chosen, and you will be the one of another stalker in the zone. One problem of this mode is, you'll get random gears when you respawn, but there's usually no meds for your second life in the zone. And reviving as one of your companion stalkers, it doesn't work, it's also kinda bothering me. Survival mode, is, in fact, I am not used to this mode. As far as I know, this mod disables the story mode questline, and spawns large number of zombies and zombified stalkers than usual. I didn't notice a huge difference but maybe it's because I haven't keep playing the game with the mode. I assume the amount of zombies spawn will be increased from time to time, so player needs to get over the zombie waves coming up, to survive and keep the challenge going. Iron Man mode is the best feature in my opinion. When you get kinda comfortable with this hardcore mode, you won't be able to play the game without this. Of course, there's no way you can totally get comfortable with this mode, since when you exceed the limit of mistakes, your save file is gone. But that's the element of this hardcore mode. As the zone punishes you way harder for your mistakes, you've gotta be cautious, and be better, making the gameplay to entirely different way. I suggest trying out easier setup if you are not quite an experienced player, like, 5 lives and 1 day of life granter, and you'll be fine, I guess. Just play smart and don't be too aggressive. And, about the life granter feature, it's just simply the zone giving you extra chances for your Iron Man run. By the way, sleeping does not affect the cooldown of life granter thing. With campfire mode, you can't save your game in normal way, in order to save your game, you need to get into the area, near the campfire. You don't need to ignite the campfire to save. Agony mode makes the battle more intense, since with this mode, you can't save while in combat, 
while having some bad status like bleeding, radiation, while the emission or the psi storm is ongoing, and etc. Timer mode just simply makes cooldown between making save files. Anomaly is pretty stable so you don't have to keep making saves per every minute like a paranoid android, so if you want to prevent doing save spam, it can be a good option. But game can crash down sometimes still, so think about it before try this one. Accessible zone is enabled by default. If you disable it, you need to purchase for every route. Without buying route, you can't move across the map at all. It's not like disabling this one will give you some kind of side quest to unlock a path or something. Just spending some extra money to unlock other locations, that's all. Sometimes the player can get a random route from Dead Stalker's PDA. That's a cool one. Okay, now let's take a look into the details of game settings. You'll see many stuff in the settings section, but I am gonna just skip these general stuff like visual, sound, keybindings. You can just play them around, and simply put the cursor onto it, then you'll get info about that one. Okay, let's talk about the gameplay and progression difficulty. It only affects your current playthrough, so for another run, another setup is needed. Gameplay and progression difficulty setups are affected by difficulty presets from start loadout screen. And here you can tweak every options in detail. It's not that complicated, so you could just take a look and you'll get the idea. If you are confused at something, just make a comment down below, or ask the Anomaly Discord. Alright, next one. Fast travel and backpack travel features. As its name, the feature allows you to move here to there quick. There's a small difference between them. Fast travel lets you move from your current location to other certain places. You could see the dim green colored house markers from PDA map. And backpack travel lets you move to custom stashes you've made all over the map. Of course, normal stashes and its markers can't be targeted for your backpack traveling. So, they are very comfortable QOL feature to use. If we abuse this fast travel feature bit too much, it'll break the immersion level. But it's really helpful for saving extra time. So use this for your own sake, just don't get addicted to keep using fast travel every time. By the way, there's an open backpack option when I right click my custom stash. It used to be player can open backpack almost everywhere in the same map, before. Almost means it had really a long range to open those remote custom stashes. But in this beta version, it has been nerfed in a quite realistic way. However, the open backpack thing is still in PDA, and I don't know why, player still can open the stash from PDA, when almost right next to the stash. Guess this gonna be removed or be buffed in a reasonable way. Okay, and lastly, the disguise system. So with other factions outfits, player can disguise as other factions member. When you acquire an outfit from other factions, it has a faction patch attached on. If you detach the patch, then you are not using the disguise system. You can leave the patch keep attached on the outfit, to disguise as the faction member, or you can detach it and put the patch on later, when you want to disguise, which will consume one related faction patch. When you disguised as a different faction member, you can see the disguise reveal indicator at center bottom. Until your disguise has blown up, you can not only getting into enemy faction's base, but you can even take some side quests from them, which makes this disguise system pretty interesting, especially when you are up to the sneaky breaky spy roleplaying or something. As other features, this system sometimes works great, sometimes works in weird ways, sometimes it doesn't make sense. You can play around with the detail adjustment options from the setting tap, turning all the suspicion factors off will make your disguise perfectly undetectable. So tweak them as you wish and have fun. Alright guys, this is the end of the Anomaly Basic Guide, Part 1. I hope this guide was helpful, and if you actually liked the video, click the thumbs up button and press subscribe. Also you can leave a comment and it really helps me a lot. Thank you for watching, I will see you next time, with the part 2 a basic guide.